Welcome to Cross Culture New Mexico. I'm your host, Mark Tross. We're going to continue with the Refiner's Fire and the ministry of T. Austin Sparks on the topic of the urgency and necessity for a life in the fullness of the Spirit. The church must begin to pray for that incoming fullness of the Spirit to restore its testimony, to save its life, to constitute it God's instrument for his glory and the exaltation of Christ. It requires the Holy Ghost to do that, but he is not going to do it apart. He is going to do it by the church, and that is his instrument. Oh, we must pray that in this day of decadence, God will yet again fill an instrument with his spirit and make it his effective instrument at this time. It is true that we are in the last of those church ages, the Laodicean age. And what are the characteristics of that age? Well, mediocrity, neither one thing nor the other, neither hot nor cold, nothing outstanding or conspicuous on the spiritual side. The very ordinary level, yes, a compromise. But worse than that, self-satisfaction, complacency, lack of vision, and a feeling that all is well. I am rich and increased with goods. I have need of nothing. It is all right. Plenty of good work is being done. There is plenty of enterprise, plenty of organization, plenty of machinery, and plenty of people being busy. What have you got to grumble about? Oh, but there are other eyes, and you know what is said. Saith the Amen is a significant introduction. What is the meaning of that Amen? Saith the Verily, which means, Saith the one who is positive. You are negative, and you are not in oneness with me in spirit, and in this age of complacency and contentment against those who call themselves my people, I am speaking in a very broad way about this. That is true, but worse still, there is awful blindness to the condition by reason of this compromise. Thou knowest not that thou art blind. If you talk to many Christian people about spiritual matters, they do not know what you are talking about. If you talk about spiritual needs, they gape at you and really do not know what it is you are getting at. I have talked to many ministers and multitudes of Christian workers, and when I have used the phrase spiritual things, I discovered that they thought I was talking about mysticism and metaphysics. Those may be extreme cases, and there are different levels of that. But we do not have to come out to a very wide circle to discover that there is an awful blindness to spiritual matters and to spiritual needs amongst the people of God. The tragedy is that they do not know that they are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. And that is the trouble. It is the condition of the age. One characteristic of the whole thing and the explanation is that things have got big. When they had to fight for their very existence, their spiritual condition was different. But when they became successful and big, they lost their spiritual power. And that is the position of many Christians and of many a thing which once had a testimony for God. When it succeeded on an extensive scale, it discovered or recognized that it no longer had to fight for its life. And thus, losing its fighting force, it lost its vision and its testimony. It is a good thing to be kept in a place where you have to fight for your life if it means drawing upon God for spiritual power, God save us from ever getting to the place where we feel it is no longer necessary to fight. But this is the spirit of the Laodicean age. What is the appeal that is made here? What is the spirit saying? And what is the spirit saying in the midst? Him that overcometh, overcometh what? This awful state of things, this tragic spiritual weakness, this decline, this blindness, this difference. The Spirit says, in effect, 
in the midst of this, I want some to rise up and throw this thing off and get to God in desperation to save the situation. Will that have our response? The Spirit saith, To him that overcometh, do we respond? Have we an ear to hear what the Spirit saith? Is all this falling merely upon our brains as special teaching, doctrine, and ideas? Oh, God forbid. Believe me, this is not something that has been got up for an address. It has been wrung out almost like blood, and the assaults of the enemy in relation to it have been almost unspeakable. It has been withstood up to the last moment. The enemy has tried to stop it, to hinder these words, and to get us out of it altogether. There has been awful conflict, day and night. Surely, if that is true, we are not going to regard it as a mere discourse. Surely the Spirit is saying something. What is he saying? God wants that company of those who may be called overcomers, who in the power of the Holy Ghost take upon themselves the burden of the Lord's interest in the universe to see that he gets his rights, to bring about the overthrow of the enemy, to save the spiritual life of many of his people, and to maintain his testimony in the earth. Shall we consecrate ourselves to that? May the Holy Spirit aid us. Thanks for joining us today. Next time we'll be talking on the topic the bond servant of a despot. Join us online at crossculturenm.weebly.com. Follow us on Twitter at crossculturenm. Be sure to like and share our Facebook page, crossculturenm. And be sure to join our worldwide Yahoo group today. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.